In this episode of the Architect Beats Music Business Podcast, we're talking about the Screen Actors Guild strike. How will it impact the music business? Stick around and find out. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? This is the Architect Beats Music Business Podcast. We are your host, Platinum Producers, Architect Beats. I am Juggernaut. I am Mike Trauma D. And together we make the super duper group Architect Beats. If it's your first time here, I'll make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for notifications. Click on that bell icon. And we're going to get into a topic that, you know, kind of impacts us because we do have some friends that are in the uh, the the film and television world, but it's the Screen and Actors Guild. They're going on strike uh, because of a, a myriad of different situations that we want to discuss. And we want to also discuss how that strike can possibly impact the music business or how it is impacting the music business because basically the parent companies that are involved in the whole situation are basically parent companies for the, your major labels, etc. So we wanted to talk about how that's going to impact the music business, what people can look out for, and basically put you in position to combat the situations that the folks are going through over there at the Screen Actors Guild, and how that could going to get, how that's going to really impact us in the music business. So let's jump into it. Chuck, uh, let's give us some background. You know what's what what exactly is going on? So. Uh, right now, what we have, we have a major situation going on with the Screen Actors Guild, and basically their main thing is that they're they're having a a problem with a lot of the current situations are in terms of technology, in terms of payment, in terms of like streaming. So like the major major issue is the the actors and the screenwriters. So basically, it's the screen the Screen Actors Guild and the Screenwriters Guild. They're feeling as if there is a major exploitation going on because uh, the the pay and the funds are not basically meeting the rate of inflation and it's not meeting where technology currently is because we're talking about a whole lot of streaming. We're talking about, um, you know, just different situations, AI coming into the fold and basically what the actors are trying to secure. They're trying to secure their future in this business, trying to secure that they're going to get paid adequately, you know, with the with the increase in streaming, because what they're seeing is they're seeing lower royalty rates, uh, low, lower residual rates. Um, and just basically they're looking to overhaul how how they're being paid and how workers are being dealt with by the major studios. Um, it's a little Chuck, I, I, I went through uh, this uh, proposal and stuff and. Uh... It's a lot of stuff, man. Right. They're, they're basically saying this. They're fighting for the survival of their profession. And, you know, we want to kind of dissect it, kind of take a look at what some of some of the things that they're asking for and then see how it pertains to the music business in some cases. And, you know, for the Screen Actors Guild, you know, at least in their situation, there's a union that does protect them. And the at music least. business is it's not really that prominent for us. Um, there's really no protections for producers. There's no protections for us like that. And you're really, you're really kind of on your own. But um, some of the things that they're asking for, we're, we're trying to kind of dissect it, you know, it to see is this really a good ask or, or how does it impact them or how is it going to impact us, especially Chuck, when we're talking I'm, about the artificial intelligence stuff. Chuck, I'm, I'm shocked out by some of the things that I'm seeing. Because some of these things should have been in place a long time ago, in my opinion. You know, some of these things, some of these things I thought they already had, like just naturally. And to go through the things they're asking for, I'm like, wow, like I can't believe they don't have that. It's really unfair. You know, it's really, it, it, it reminds me of the music business, like totally. I mean, I know it's pretty much this entertainment is all, all together, but it's, it's really a, a shark pimp kind of environment. They're taking advantage of the creators. They, they're taking advantage of the talent. And it's the same thing that's happening in the music business. They, and they've been taking uh, advantage of them for decades. 
And from what I'm seeing, man, you know, what they're asking for, I thought they already got just off the, off the rip. Same thing here. Like, I, I thought that some of that stuff was already just kind of basic. Yeah, basic. And to not even have some of the basic things is like, it's, it's, it's mind blowing to me. And it, what, it's something, something definitely needs to be done. One of the main things that stood out was that in, in their uh, proposal is that they were looking for a new media revenue sharing. Um, and it, it's basically saying the cast want to share in the revenue that's generated with the with their performances that are exhibited on streaming platforms. So basically, right. if you have a, a show that has a high ratings or gets high stream amounts, you want to you want to share in that revenue stream. Right. And like, you know, in the music business, it's like if you, if you have a, a record, that's a hit. And as long as you're connected to the writer and so forth and you're connected to the copyright, um, you right. would get escalations, you would get so forth. So as the record continues and got bigger, you would get bigger payout. Right. Um, and it and it really depends on how you negotiate it, but in this particular proposal, what we're seeing is totally and flat out rejected. Huh. Right? right. So That's... so it's like like they're like no, you can't you can't you can't uh, share in the revenue streaming. And the the reason that's kind of mind boggling to me because when you look at a platform like YouTube, that's that's exactly how it's built. It's built into revenue streaming, meaning that if you're if you're successful on YouTube with a successful uh, show or if something on YouTube goes viral you're going to be tied into the revenue stream from perpetuity. And why wouldn't they do that on the, on the movie side? It's kind of, it's, it's YouTube can do it. Why can't you guys do it? So you're telling me that there's, they don't have, uh, almost like a, a 401k kind of thing situation, similar to like what publishing is for artists. And that was supposed to be the residual, but apparently what's happening is that, because of the uh, the streaming, they say basically you're talking about new media revenue sharing. So you know and I know that when we did our old contracts back in the day, um, it didn't have it didn't have uh, iTunes, it didn't right. have MP3, it didn't have these separate situations. Now the language wasn't in our contracts. The labels could have easily not paid us on it. Right. Language is, the language wasn't there. The technology didn't exist. They didn't do that. They still just, they still gave you some of your um your publishing. They still gave you um some mechanicals, et cetera, et cetera. So you still was able to get paid in that situation. Here it just seems as if they're not trying to tie the actors into any type of new media revenue sharing. So they're basically just trying to keep all the money for themselves. Hey, I'm not I'm not knocking it. And that's just one proposal that's coming out of here. Um you know, they they were looking like they wanted to get a eleven percent general wage increase. Mm -hmm. Um, it looks like they only got half of that. Like, are they only going to give them about five? Um, something else that stood out to me was um, it was basically the the AI situation where folks wanted to, um, basically make a digital replica of you. So you get paid one time. And then be able to use your likeness in perpetuity without any type of travel. Uh, yeah, without any type of revenue share. And I just find that to just be crazy. That's really, like that's crazy. You know, that's all something about about some like uh, relocation expenses and and things of that nature. Like you know, like just, no, no, normally if you even have a if you even have a job that's gonna 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 move you, they'll kick in you know, for, 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 for relocation and stuff like that, or, you know, but for them, it's, it's, so man, this thing is crazy. And here they were saying, they were asking that, you know, like for, for example, they have like self tape auditions and they say basically performers should not be required to pay for access to employment opportunities. And, you know, in our business, you know, if, if we want to get on a project, and we have to record the song. We have to produce the records. We have to pay for the studio time. We don't know if it's going to get picked up or not. Right. That's always been a cost that's been incurred upon us. Right. We have to stay in the studio. We have to produce the songs. We have to produce the demos, the references, hire the background singers, hire everybody to get a, a full production to present a song for it to be placed right. anywhere. So I mean, you hope, And you hope that it gets placed. And then, once, and then once it gets placed, you're hoping that you could offset some of that cost that you kicked up in the, in the beginning. So I, I kind of find it odd that they're asking for that 
you know, that they're asking for folks not to, to, um, you know, to be reimbursed for their, you know, looking for work, but that's, that's always been how it's always been as a creative, like you, you can, you can always, uh, you have to find a way to do your, your demos at your own dime, you know, or your, and, you and, and they don't, and they, and they don't comp you back when, no. once you get picked up by whatever, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that's, that's, that's wrong in this, in this, in this, uh, whole thing. And I still don't understand why this wasn't addressed a long time ago, because it's not just, uh, the, the turn of new technology. It's some basic things, you know, and I know Jug, we both have our opinion of, you know, the reason why this is still the way it is. And even, you know, like going as far as leadership, you know, and their, 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 uh, loyalty where that lies, you know, you have to, you have to ask, you know, who's, who's sleep at the wheel, who's. I will say, and I've been saying this for a long time. It's like this. If you have the label, let's say the label is the studio, right? Universal records, universal studios, right? Let's just say this is what the situation is kind of birth of the same feather and universal cuts the check right so if there's a deal going on universal cuts the check so under that check that that deal's happening everybody gets paid the, the lawyers everybody so if i'm the talent and i try to make a deal with the studio and everybody in between is negotiating but the check comes from the studio who does everybody work for studio. so there's no way for you to really have any true, you know, negotiations is because the money all comes from one source. There's always a conflict of interest. Even the so-called people you hire to to negotiate for you are technically being paid from, yeah, you know, though, because that's the money. That's where the money's coming from, right? And then what a lot of folks that don't really want to talk about is they don't want to talk about how the folks that are negotiating the deals in between they don't want to ruin a relationship with the studio for future deals. Yeah. They just don't want to do that. Nobody wants to do that. If this is who you're going to get paid for in the future, if you're going to be doing deals with this this studio or this label for the next 10, 15, 20 years, you're not trying to ruffle the feathers of the people that's going to be potentially paying you for different types of deals for for the next 10, 15, 20 years. So there's, no, so there's really no way for you to be in, in a position to truly negotiate. You kind of get what you can get. Right. You know, and and I think and I think that's not being highlighted enough. There's another part of this thing that just stood out to me right now. They had geographic discrimination, and I've been talking about this in that industry for a little while, where it seems as if you're if you're not a New York or Los Angeles actor, you kind of treat it as if you kind of like, you know, bottom of the barrel, and they they're basically saying they were they requested a discussion with relevant casting personnel regarding geographic discrimination in casting where actors outside of New York and Los Angeles are offered lesser terms for the same role. What? Like, how does this even exist? Right. And this is basically saying that the, um, the studios countered and say, this is totally rejected. They don't even want to have a discussion about this. Wow. And and I would ask you in this situation, right? During the pandemic, where was most of everything being filmed and and, sh and done? Because New York and LA was closed. Atlanta, exactly. So, so you you have this situation. Wait, so Atlanta, so Atlanta, so Atlanta's out the mix on that. Yeah, Atlanta's out the mix. But Atlanta is 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 like the home. Of oh, it, wow. I said, hey, hey, hey! You, you see wow. what I'm saying? You see how it works? So this is how this thing here is working. What we're looking at is we're looking at a dinosaur, you know, that's really trying to make sure that they're trying to to keep themselves relevant and make sure that they don't go extinct. Because Atlanta is disrupting uh, L.A. and New York. There you go. There you go. So 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 that so now now we start to see why, you know, that they want to offer them lesser terms. Now we see why they don't want folks to do a lot of the things that are coming independent that are coming out of Atlanta. Um, now we see what that situation is about. So really it's business as usual. 
And we want the artists that are looking at this from a music standpoint to understand that you have to control your your situation as most as you can. And you have to leverage your situation so that you have some sort of ownership, some sort of control. Um, and you cannot leave yourself to the mercy of the majors because you can clearly see that they just they don't have your your best interests at heart. You are, and if and if there's other ways for you to exploit your music, if there's other mediums, um, YouTube, uh, you know, what's the other ones? Uh, Facebook, uh, TikTok, you know, your, own, just, your own website, especially, especially that. But if if you're you can't just rely on one source of mm -hmm. of of uh of payment anymore or one stream of income coming from just the studios because it looks like the studios right now they're they're rejecting so much of these situations in terms of the um just just stuff like that that to me just seems that should be a no-brainer that are just being re just being uh rejected but jug um from my understanding you know you can't even get a role in another show or movie you're kind of locked in if if you're working with a, a particular movie set and you're doing your 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 movie, you're locked in. Right. If, if they if they shut down production, it's not like you could jump over there and go get a quick uh, do a quick, you know, feature feature series real quick to 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 feed yourself. You would have to get permission, and then most times you may not get permission because a lot of times they don't want you to alter your look. Right, because sometimes most roles may may require you to change your looks. Maybe if you remember, um, if you remember like the first iteration of Justice League where Superman had this bad AI over his face was because he had a beard, and that that he that he had a beard for a for a he had to shoot it with a beard. Uh, Henry Cavill had to shoot the beard situation because he was doing Mission Impossible for Universal. So I mean, so I mean, so they had so they had to AI out his beard and it looked horrible. I mean, I so, get it. If, it. if it's going to impact, um, if it's going to come back and impact the the job, I understand that. But you know, if it doesn't, it should it should it really should be a no brainer. The, the guy should an, a, a actor or actor should be allowed to go and, and eat. Well, a lot of that situation is that what if that person goes on another set and gets injured. And then now my my project can't get finished, and I've put a hundred million, or ten yeah, million but, into this project. But, you know but the act, but the actor could could get in his car and drive off the set from you know going home and get. Hey, 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 hey you're trying you're trying to limit that. So I kind of see both ends in that. I see that where that can go, where I can see where the actors want to try to, you know, they want to try to maximize the situation, especially because of the residual situation seems to be almost non-existent, like. Like, like just looking at, just looking at this situation in terms of, you know, high budget situations. You see, and, I could, I could understand that kind of control when you're giving them everything, you know, you're giving them residuals, you're giving them the room and board, you're, you're, you're taking care of them all the way around the board. I could understand that type of thought process where okay you're not gonna go anywhere you're not gonna eat anywhere else right now but because you're 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 putting in so much to them but if you're not if you're not taking care of them especially when it's off season or they're not shooting something that happens a uh, pandemic whatever the cases may be and actors actresses gotta sit back and starve and can't do anything else because well, that's crazy, right? To be, you're basically exclusive. I, that's that's really what's happening here. Is like you, you become like you. You said, did you say? Did you say it was kind of like a? Uh, you didn't. We didn't call it a pimp relationship, did I? We? Did I sure did? Okay, <laughs> so, I said it earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. It's like a pimp relationship, man. Like I can't. There's no other way to really kind of. To to put it out there, it's like I want everything, and you just have to work, right? You know, and and that's what it is at this point. Like we want everything. Um, granted, we get it. You guys are putting up the money. We get it because that's the same thing in the music business, right? The label put the money up, and you got to work under. You got to re return that money. 
we got to recoup that money at the percentage that we give you. And that's unfair in itself. But this is just this is just a situation. So I guess what I want to try to do is I want to pivot now and say, OK, this is what the issues are. The studios are creating these type of issues. If you're an independent artist, if you're an independent person in the music business, how, you know, how are these things similar? And then also, how do we try to navigate this stuff for just the folks that are watching that are, you know, currently in the strike? Because people who are in the strike, who we've been in contact with, you know, we have always said from the beginning, like, yeah, you have to leverage a celebrity, right? And leveraging your celebrity. So let's say you're on a show or let's say you're in a, you know, in a project, you have to find a way to leverage that and make money off of that outside of, you know, what's going on. Now that might be you making appearances, club appearances. That might be you, you know, signing autographs, taking photos, giving guest posts, going podcasts, but, but you have to find a way to monetize your likeness for yourself. You just can't allow yourself to be monetized by the studio and, you know, always want to get paid from the studio. You have to find a way to monetize your own likeness. And I think this is where a lot of the, the music artists have to kind of pay attention to There's ways to monetize your own likeness in case you can't book another gig. You know, how do you monetize your likeness? You know, what what do you do in the meantime? So I guess that's the question that I wanted to put to you is like, what, what are some of the ways that we can, you know, tell these artists to make sure that we're um, leveraging them, leveraging ourselves to make sure that we're not, you know, completely destitute when situations like this occur, like a strike. Well, I think some of us are already doing it. Shout out to Nori. Shout out to to Cam. You know, shout out to um, Bun B. Yeah. Um, shout out to Nas. There are so many artists that are creating businesses outside of music. And I think you got to use your celebrity to create new income. Yeah. You know, create new lanes for yourself. Um, the OGs are showing us right now um, that, you know, the music business is so twisted and you never know when you're going to get paid, if you're going to get paid, sometimes how you're going to get paid. So you got to use your celebrity to create new opportunities for yourself whether it's, you know, creating a podcast or creating a, a uh, getting involved in a restaurant deal situation or whatever it is, as long as you have ownership, I think that's key. And you have to use these things to open up new ways, new businesses, new ideas, because the days of just having a single income, they, they long gone, you know, and the worst part is if your income is based on, another company, if another company is the one that's uh, cutting the check, or if another company has control over, you know, your likeness, your image, your product, then you're at the mercy of that company. So it's best that you use your celebrity to create new ways of making money, open new businesses, and being your own boss um, and owning. That's key. You got you to do it. Don't just do one thing. Don't just be a music producer. Don't and, just and be an we, artist. We've been saying this for the inception of this podcast that you have to do that, especially in the new music business, that you have to look for those opportunities. And let's say that you're a new artist and you don't have the celebrity, you should still look to understand that as an artist in the music business, your music is going to be exploited to sell other products. Your likeness right. is going to be used to ex and exploited to sell other products whether it's a movie trailer, whether it's being synced with us uh, in a film, whether it's being with a video game, they're using your music and your likeness to sell their products. So what we're basically telling you to do is uh, pay attention and start making the products yourself. Right. Don't just be exploited to, to, for your music to sell the product all the time. Maybe it's something that you can create that you can exploit for yourself and put yourself in the middle of that food chain and then create yourself different uh, areas of, of income or different situations where you can make money from. 
So that's really what's been key for a lot of artists, like you're saying, that's been able to pivot. It's like, okay, if you have celebrity, okay, let's leverage it. If you don't have celebrity and you're trying to be, trying to um, build it through your music, right? Just be clear that you want your music to be attached to something that you can use to sell in tandem. And mm -hmm. that will help your music move a lot faster than it moving by itself. I mean, the list goes on. Look at Dr. Dre. You know, look at look at Rihanna. I mean, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it's a, like he's in the pudding. The, the the blueprint is actually there. You know, it, it's just that you know sometimes we get stuck in this old oh, music, 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 and you know other companies and corporations have been using, you know, been using our music to sell their products. All of them. Like think about it. You know, the Pepsi's, the Coca Colas, the the KFC's, the you know, Gap, like all of the companies for, for decades been using our music to 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 promote their products, using our brand to promote their brand. You know, and this I think it's you know, we gotta do that within our own self. You know, we gotta use our own products to promote our own brand. So, you know, if you're if you're if you're an artist, you gotta have something else besides just just music. You, you know, we all have more than one talent. You just gotta find it. You know, you got you gotta find it. And and the way music goes, you know, you may not survive. What did they say? The average lifespan of uh, uh, artists five years, if even if you're lucky. Yeah, I think we got duped. A lot of us, a lot of us got duped, and they're just trying to sell music. They're not realizing that the the, the real bag was partnering with the brands or right. creating your own brands, you know, right? Like that was that was the that was really the science behind it that a lot of people just couldn't catch on to. You know, people just really was out here trying to pedal music and music is it's very saturated and it's hard for you to get to get attention now. Right. Absolutely. So, that, so, so now so when you yeah. have something like what's going on now where, you know, you don't have any ownership, you're at the mercy of the studios, you're at the mercy of the companies. They're gonna do what they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna wanna do. Yeah. And it's it, it's sad because there's so many talented artists, you know, there's so many talented entertainers, writers, and, you know, they, they've been getting duped for decades. And we're kind of now getting an idea of how bad it is, you know, after seeing some of the proposals and even the projections, we're getting an idea of how bad it really is. You know, I, I didn't know it was that bad, especially for, for in, in the acting world. It's, well, what, what, it's, it's, what, heart, it's heartbreaking, man. What what makes it even more to me? What makes it even more like, like, uh, terrible, is the advent of technology. Right, there was a time where you didn't have a movie camera in your pocket, which is your cell phone. Mm -hmm. Your cell phone, people can people are shooting movies on their iPhones and then on their on their Androids and so forth and so on. People are. Yeah. shooting high quality content yeah. on their cell phones and we're not even talking about using any digital cameras dslr so forth and so on it's so the, the digital cameras you're right so so my problem is is my problem is is that you know how did we still allow the studios to have such a stronghold on this industry with the advent of technology it almost seems as if they have been able to dupe everyone into just doing it the way that they've been doing it and not to progress using other forms of media, right? I, why aren't more movies released on YouTube, right? I, I saw the situation where the Squid Games guy, you know, got a, got a six-figure payday, right? Maybe like 200000 or something like that. Don't quote me if I'm wrong on it. But from what we understand, he didn't get any residuals. He just got paid up front, like, you know, one six yeah. figure payday. And that turned out and that saved the network. It made billions of dollars yep. in re in revenue. So the question would have been if he had taken his project to say a YouTube episodic and would have done it on YouTube, he would have at least shared in half of the revenue stream. Right. Right. right? Because they, they share the advertising revenue with the creators. So if he had had a hit show on YouTube, he would have made, you know, so much more money than what he got paid from Netflix. So this is this is so this is what the the the, the issue is: is that why aren't we exploiting the technology? 
Why are we allowing them to exploit the technology and use it against us versus us using the technology to create, you know, competition? I think, I think, unfortunately, I think in our culture that we're not fully versed in how technology works. That's big that you said that, boy. Um, value, uh, if you think about, um, you think about all of these rich, uh, Silicon Valley uh, tech tech companies, and you look at their roster, you look at their employees. How many how many of them are us? Very low. You know, as as a culture, as you know, we have not had an impact as far as cracking into that area. We do everything else, you know, but we don't have enough. We don't not, we don't have enough. We play the video games, but we don't create the video games, you know, and we have enough kids going off to schools and colleges, but it's, it's not enough to break into to areas that need to, you know, to make a change. And then on top of that, now they have this whole thing with, um, and I don't want to go too far off topic here, with um, they're now the whole new laws or new rules that they're doing with the whole um, affirmative action stuff. Um, that they're not going to, you know, certain schools are now going to kind of like totally disregard, you know, certain jobs and schools, you know, based on you being black. I mean, that's a whole nother situation. Right, but at the bottom line is we don't have enough of, of of our people in the right positions, and because of that, decisions are being made that's impacting us in a negative way. It's it's it's, it's, it's bottom line. The decisions yeah. that are being the decisions that are being made are by people that don't look like us, and it's impacting us. Uh, yeah, because you know we all know it's about self preservation. Like we want everything to be fair and equitable, but we know that, you know, each community is basically practicing self-preservation. It just seems like we're the only community that wants everybody to be fair, where everybody else is doing self-preservation and their progress, they're, they're moving forward. We're too, we're too, we're too. Um, and 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 again, I hate to go off on the on the on these little side side um rants, but we, we seem content with just. Um, being part of people's platforms, being part of people's award shows, mm-hmm. being part of people's, you know, like we don't have anything for ourselves. And then when they don't give us, you're mad. You want to boycott. You want to get mad when they don't give us this amount of streams or this amount of, of royalties and this and that. But it's their, it's their plat. It goes back to the, to what I've been saying before. When you don't, when you don't own it, you know. It's up to them. Yeah. We don't own it. We don't own the technology. We don't own the companies. Or if we do own the companies, it's a subsidiary of another company that's not owned by us. We don't own the studios. Mm-hmm. We don't. We don't own the, the. We don't even own the products. Mm-hmm. What do we own? And and it's and it's really kind of like we said before. It's like there's really no excuse for it because technology is advanced in such a way where you can mm-hmm. own it. You can re- reverse engineer the code. You can do that. Like now, it's not. A, it's a situation where, like, there really isn't any excuse for us not to have distributors and not for us to have this and not for us not to have that. Folks, folks don't want to do the hard work. I see that. I see that. But then, but then, don't you can't complain. Like then, we can't complain about hey, they don't want to pay me. Like you said, like if I if I create the platform, if I took all the risk and create the infrastructure and the platform. You're not going to be able to dictate the terms to me, if, and I, right. if I if I if I spent decades grinding, sacrificing, this. sacrificing my time with my family, or uh, sacrificing funds to create a platform that may take me 10, 15 years to finally get here, and now I'm bringing in people, boom, boom, boom. It's up to me to decide if I want to give them the same uh, perks that I have. Yeah. Should I? 
Most people won't. No, 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 they going to say, listen, all you got to do is give me your product. I'll place it right here. And that's it. You don't have to do anything else. So that means that you do not, you do not need to, to get all of these things that I'm getting. Cause this is my platform. Now I'm not, I'm not trying to say I side with the studio, yeah, right, right. studio, but that's the logic, but that's the logic and that's the attitude. That's why when I looked at the, the the that agreement, and I'm just seeing a rejected, a rejected. They're not even trying to come back with to negotiate. They're not even counter offering. No, there's no need to. There's no need to because again, we didn't create enough situations to provide leverage. And this is where, and this is when I say to you, and you and I talked about this offline, that when we say, oh, somebody behind the wheel at the union, somebody at the union dropped dropped the ball, somebody fell asleep at the wheel, right? Is because what how 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 were you going to ask for some of these things and you didn't put a mechanism in for leverage? There's no mechanism for you to negotiate from. You can't negotiate like how can you negotiate um say for example AI situation? Mm -hmm. How do you come how do you combat it? Well, first of right? all, you, right? you can't so, so, you, so if you can't combat it. How can you dictate terms or ask for terms? Like you would have to have said, like you and I talked about it earlier. Okay, did we create a mechanism to copyright our likenesses, trademark our likenesses, right? So that AI cannot use our likenesses without, you know, right. the same way the same way you would have the right for a copyright to, you know, to distribute or to charge a license or so on. Did anybody discuss that? prior to trying to say, okay, you know what? We want to see if we can stop the studio from using our likenesses in perpetuity. Like, what was the way for you to combat it versus just asking them, hey, give us a royalty. And they're like, no, we don't have to. But something I saw, they haven't, they haven't did a change or made something uh, in, in over 40 years. E that's a whole other, that's a whole other you, 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 how, how do you, how do you expect to get anywhere and you not, you not, making any waves 40 years that like some of this stuff's been in place for and nobody not, says anything not in this business nothing should be in place so like in, in all honesty we should be looking at you know discussions on this stuff about every seven years because the technology keeps advancing you see what i'm saying so so that we, these things should be going back to the table every seven to ten years right you know royalty rates everything because we didn't have spotify 15 years ago right or, you know, yeah, you didn't have these things. Like, you know, so so it's like we, these things need to be renegotiated. Netflix, you know, when Netflix went from DVD to straight streaming, right? I don't know if people really watched that. I was one of those people that was returning DVDs to Netflix in the mail, right? <laughs> so I was an early adopter in that situation. So when it first went over to streaming, they're like, people were like, well, you could watch it on TV. You could watch it on this app. People were blown away. People didn't really even understand what was going on. And then now all of the studios decided to create their own streaming situation. Yep. And then now what they started to do is they started to hoard their intellectual property. Nobody's talking about that. So now if you wanted to watch maybe an old series of ALF or something like that or something that was on NBC, you have to have Peacock. If you want to watch, you know, uh, an, old, uh, uh, an old cartoon that was on the Disney, you would have to have Disney+. Plus. Whereas before... There would be a license that, you know, Netflix might have it or this one might have it. So now you're creating a situation where no one wants to license their situation because they're all looking for subscribers. Before, I can watch a movie on different platforms. Now that's not the case. Right. But here's the kicker on top of that. Now they're buying out music catalog to add to that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like so, but but it's making it so that you have to have ten different subscriptions, right? And then you then you're looking at the 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 economy, like who can afford that in this economy? Yeah, you're making it impossible for the the average consumer to afford. The average consumer is not going to have Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max, Disney Plus, right? Right, like you're like. <laughs> 
I mean, because you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Paramount, right? Yeah. You know, like everybody's not going to have all of those things and then still have to pay cable on top of that. Then have to still pay for your Amazon Prime. Then still have, you know what I mean? Like, like, like at, at what point you get to a point where you're paying three to four hundred dollars for television? Yeah, yeah. We didn't talk about music stuff yet. I wouldn't even get into that because now you still need Apple Music, you need Spotify. Yeah. Like, come on! Like, what are we really talking about? Here? Why, is... And then what happens if they start? They they go back to releasing albums or releasing content that's solely one one platform. Yeah. Hence, hence could be one of the reasons why catalogs are being bought up by various companies. That's exactly what they're trying to do. Because now what they're going to do is that if I own all the catalog, if you want to hear your favorite Mariah song, you have to have this right. platform. And then we're going to charge you this per month. And you don't, there's, there's no place else for you to get it. Right? So, so this is where it's going. So people really don't really understand that. So this is where we want to talk about these type of situations so people can understand what's going on. And with the whole AI stuff, um, I was making an argument that the fact that they're even trying to pay the actors one time for the scan is, in some cases, generous. And you say, well, what do you mean it's generous? What do you mean people can come in for one day of work, get scanned, and then it goes in perpetuity? What you, what you, if you don't let them do it that way, they're going to basically say, you know what? We don't have to use y'all at all. We'll just we have all of y'all images anyway. We can use that as composites, and we can make we can generate new faces. We don't have to use you guys' images at all. Anybody, because they have enough AI people. Enough people have submitted their photos into AI for them to generate composites of anybody with variations. So you say that might look like Tom Cruise, but it don't look like Tom Cruise. So you're in a situation where you really can't fight that machine. And and that's part of my problem with it is that you're trying to tell me that the union didn't notice technology existed. Chuck, what do you, what, what do you see this going, man? Because I won't. So where do I, where, where do I see it going? Where I see it going is I see that this strike is going to take, they're going to basically squeeze them. And he said, well, what do you mean that? Or that meaning the, the studios are going to stall this bitch. They're going to stall it. They're going to make, they're, they're going to stall this bitch. And I think this, this, there's two things to this, this strike. The strike is to, is to one, it's going to, it's going to cripple the industry as we know it. Right. So that's my first, that's my first prediction. It's going to cripple the industry. And I think it's by design because they want the unemployment to impact inflation. So this is this is a this is a, a dual fold game. Like you don't get the, you don't let the, the biggest industry in the United States just all stop at one time unless there's an ulterior motive to it. So the ulterior motive, in my opinion, is that they're trying to combat inflation through the unemployment of the industry. So this is supposed to last probably for the next two quarters. It's going to last through this quarter, and maybe last through the last quarter to almost through Christmas. Christmas. I think it'll go that far. I think they'll try to make it go that far so that the studio will have no choice but to um, take whatever they, the, 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 sorry, not the studio, but the union will have no choice but to take anything that the studio offers. So they're going to try to starve them out. They're going to starve them out because they, you know, they don't really have a leg to stand on. So they're going to starve them out. And not enough, and not enough people in that industry are self-sufficient enough to go say, hey, we're going to go and do a bunch of indie projects. We're going to jump on, uh, we're going to jump on uh, YouTube. We're going to jump on Rumble. Like, not, not enough of them are savvy enough to do that. If, you know, there, there, are, there are some creators that have shown people the way. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of other creators kind of scoffed at them and like, oh, we don't want to do it like that. We don't, we don't want to be YouTube this and we don't want to do that. But they were basically showing you that, hey, this was really the model that you can protect yourself because you can monetize on YouTube. You can monetize on Facebook. You can monetize on Rumble. You can monetize on TikTok. And you can have, you can take the same content, repurpose, and it can be re-monetized almost four different times. And that's just light. That's not even talking about if you have a Patreon, you know, your own right. community, if you got merch, like, they're showing you the way, but everybody kind of just want to do it the regular Hollywood way, like you said. 
they just want to be on their award show. They want to do it this way. Then you got to starve. Like you, you're going to starve. So that's my take. My take is that they're, they're not going to, there's no rush to do a deal. There's no rush to do a deal. There's honestly too much content out as it is. And you got AI that just create whatever they want to create. I'm not even going, I'm not even going to touch on that because we have been talking about that for months. Since the minute chat GPT hit the public square, we have been saying this is a, this thing is dangerous. This thing can write these scripts. People keep saying, oh, we won't have a human touch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. Bullshit. It's, it, it, what, what that was basically saying is that you didn't understand the language models. If you had understood the language models, if you, well, because you could train it, you could train it what to do, and then you can provide examples through award-winning scripts that a studio may already have. You got decades of data through scripts that can be fed into the AI so it can understand how to write a story. And the AI, you know, and the AI gets this information from all around the world. Thank you. Everything that's on all, all the ups, the downs, the rights, the wrongs, the corrections, what feels like human, what doesn't, how to do it, everything. Or you can work off empirical data. You can work off what worked before. Right? Right? What made the Godfather hit? It, it, it can analyze the script. Right. What made, you know what I'm saying? What made Scarface do what it did? It can analyze the script, analyze the story. You know, what? where, where was the tension? What What happened when the, you know, the character development? It can it can look at that. And it analyzes the content, the, the, the comments, the feedback, the reviews. It analyzes all of these things. Come on, man. 14 years. Folks ain't really, folks ain't really looking at it for what it really needs to look at. And I, I just, I just give people just a, you know, and I know this is a little bit off the track, but because AI is a big situation in this negotiation for SAG, like I basically created a prompt, like just, just, just file, you know, fly with me real quick for chat GPT. Just if you want to write a script, right? I would tell it that it's an award-winning screenwriter and editor. It has a, div a diverse portfolio that consists of various genres, including drama, comedy, thriller, romance, and science fiction. It has a knack for storytelling combined with exceptional understanding of the screen screenplay format, dialogue writing, and character development. Right? So right. basically, we want the, the prompt. skills. That's the prompt. The, the, so we want this. Okay. The, the prompt continues. Well, Your skills as a screenplay writer involve concept creation. Generate innovative, captivating ideas for screenplays. Structure. Understand the traditional three-act structure as well as other unconventional narrative structures. Dialogue. Right? Authentic, distinct dialogue. Character development. Theme and symbolism. Genre mastery. Story analysis. Right? Character review. So basically, you give it all of these prompts, what those things, uh, dialogue in those prompts are supposed to detail. Right. And then let, and then let it go. Plug, plug it in. You plug it in, let it go, and then see what you get back. How do you compete with that? And for those who didn't don't understand what just happened, he just gave you like a free blueprint just now like, to write a script. This is a jewel. Like, <laughs> how 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 do you compete with that? You can't. So, so when I see the SAG after going in and trying to give terms and all of this on this situation, I, I'm looking at it mind boggled. I'm like, did anybody really t look at the technology? Did anybody see what was being done here? Yeah. Like you, you see that the screenwriters guild went on strike for two months prior to the screen actors guild going in. Right. So they've already been on strike for two months. So now y'all are here. So, so so now you got the whole everybody trying to join in to try to get a deal. They ain't getting no deals done because the studios have now seen the light. The studios are looking at this shit and they're saying, Hey, can we get a can we get a bunch of interns to take all of our scripts, probably hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of scripts and screenplays? Can we start feeding it into an AI engine? Can we create our own AI engine? Quick question. Is this just US based? It's that, like it's just U.S. based. Because what I'm seeing is a lot of international movies being placed. 
Because they're not going to stop. The international movie, they're going to stop, but it's still the same studios, bro. Internationally, somewhere, somehow. They're connected in some way or fashion. Because I'm seeing a lot of international movies popping up. So I'm wondering, are they are they tied into SAG as well? No, I think that's an American company. So internationally, they they're still they still eat it. This is they still going. This is their time. Cause there's gonna be a there's gonna be a void for content. There's gonna be a void for content. You know, and again, the, the I think the studios already knew that. I think this is a play for them to increase subscriptions, because people are going to be looking for things to watch. And they're just going to sit back and just say, okay, you know what? We have all of this content in here and catalog that you may have missed because we kept pumping it out mm-hmm. and give people the time to kind of absorb what's going on. Yeah. Or, they have between AI and international content, you know, they, 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 they have a plan B. Um, it looks like at least they're, they're in no rush. Let's put it that way. People are saying they're losing money hand over fish, but they're in no rush. You know, they're in no rush to try to create a deal. I don't see it. They, you know, that what's happening also is that the industry is is suffering now because a lot of um, trash movies have been created, and no one wants to talk about that. People people want to make it seem as if you know um, there's some sort of big issue. No, there's no big issue with the industry. It's just y'all guys are creating a lot of trash, um, and you expect people to continue buying the trash and people don't want it and then also you're inserting too much politics into your stuff and that's probably the larger problem oh yeah yeah you know what i'm saying that's that's the larger problem too too much agenda too much agenda too much propaganda people Mm -hmm. people are privy to it and people don't want it anymore nobody don't want it people don't really want to accept that as being the reason why a lot of movies and television shows are failing that's just too much too much propaganda, too much, you know, agendas and, and stuff. People just want to see good stories, good yeah. movies. But, you know, that's a whole topic for another day. So as we start to wrap this thing up, if, if if you know, we have to do the, this, this is sponsored by, of course, the, uh, the, the books that we got, which is the Songwriter's Guide to Song Registration, the Musician's Guide to Music Publishing, the Musician's Guide to Music Copyright, and the Ultimate Guide to Forming Your Own Music LLC. You know, those are available now. If you don't have them, please get them. Um, we thank everybody who has uh, purchased and or downloaded. Uh, we thank everybody for their support on that. You know, we put a lot of work into that, and we have some more things that will be coming, so just stay tuned for that. We're also opening up our feedback channel. Uh, we'll be providing music feedback, so we're going to we're going to uh, release a uh, email inbox, and we're going to start giving uh, music feedback, live music feedback for artists, so that we can give them the critiques on what's going on with their music, how they can improve, how you can kind of get to where you need to get to make sure that you can get the attention that you need to get from this business. Yeah, so they got to stay in tune. So, so when they uh, release that email address, just send that music through so that we can uh, get that started. And just make sure that your music is not like stolen or nothing like that, please. Yes. You know, rip from YouTube and all that. Yeah, thing. you don't want to get flagged uh, playing your music on live and then it's something happens. We, we got about four minutes left. Um, I wanted to shoot send some condolences out to uh, Gilly the Kid and Awalo. They had a, they had a, a, a loss. Gilly's son was has uh, passed away um, in Philadelphia over the weekend, and that's really like a hard, um, very hard for any parent to, you know, bury a child. Yeah. So, um, we wanted to send the condolences out to them. Absolutely. On, on that, and um, you know, just we need folks to really do better, man. It's just, it's it's crazy in these streets right now. Yeah. We've been saying it for, for some time too. It's, what's happening in, in in our communities is just is it's, it's gone from bad to worse. It seems you know, and the music was just reflecting. That, I I think also too, Mike, is that um, is that we have not accepted 
that in some cases we need to stay out the way. It's one thing if you can't stay out of the way, but if you have the ability to stay out of the way, I would encourage, you know, people to stay out of the way, um, you know, not to engage in certain activities. Yeah. Um, you know, just yeah. to just to make sure that you're protecting yourself. You have to go on offense in some cases. You can't yeah. you can't expect people to always do and say the right things. So you have to create a mechanism for yourself that you're not inserting yourself into danger. Yeah. You don't you don't have to be present at everywhere. You know, yeah. you don't have to you don't have to be there. You don't have to subject yourself to certain environments. Um Especially, especially if you're um, you're gaining any 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 little bit of success, notoriety, notoriety, um, you know, anything, you know, no matter what business or, or genre or whatever it is you're into, any type of notoriety, success, man, stay out the way. You got nothing to gain by just always being on the scene, man. I mean. Uh, social media has allowed you to be on the scene without being on the scene. So this is absolutely right. And you have to realize that jealousy and envy are very real. And, you know, and, and, and now because of social media, um, jealousy and envy is at all time high and it's, and it's breeding violence. And I think people need to, to make sure that they understand like, Hey, you know, there are responsibilities that come with being successful. There are responsibilities with people that are being, you know, that have notoriety and, you know, you have to move different. So that is sad. You, see, you can't, it's like, you can't, you can't even go to the corner store. You can't do certain things, but you know, you know, when you, when you reach a certain level of fame or notoriety and it comes with the territory, you have to, all aspiring artists, all, you know, entertainers, Whatever it is, you you have to, you know, look at these things. You have to pay attention. You know, if you, this is what you want to do, you're gonna have to alter your life. You know, before your life is altered. And we'll leave it. We'll leave it with that, man. That's a jewel right there. Thanks to everybody for watching. This is the Architect Beats Music Business Podcast. Until next time, folks. We're gonna give you peace. Peace. Be safe out there. Thank you.